Christopher Thompson from the Lean Institute Brazil. Uh, Christopher has been for the last 40 years um, um, supporting team in their Lean transformation teams and companies. So please welcome Christopher Thompson. Okay. Oh, okay. So, good afternoon. I'm Christopher Thompson from Lean Institute Brazil, and I'm here in Portugal for my first time, but I'm presenting in, Eng in English. So it's the same thing like uh, Cesar. Uh, I get a little less intelligent in, in English, but it's okay. Let's let's do this. Um, it's an honor to be at uh, the, this event. I, I remember the first time I went to the Lean IT Summit that Marie was organizing in, in Paris and thinking about what, what could we do to help uh, our community there in, in Brazil. So it was, it, it's an honor to be here and see this really expanding and, bringing, and sharing some of the knowledge and some of the learnings we had. Um, where is Richard? Ah, Richard is there. So Richard, I was checking about uh, Naimuri. Actually, the word doesn't exist in Japanese, but if you put it on Google Translator, Nai and Muri, it goes to not to respond. But again, if you put it on Google and say, what language is this? It find out, finds uh, Maori, it's hope. So maybe you can change your story, like you said. <laughs> and, and it's a Maori name. And actually, your company is hope. So just, it's like you said, it's a fact. It, you, you can in interpret the facts. OK, so um, I'm going to talk a little about why you need link thinking during the digital transformation, OK? And the first thing about the uh, digital transformation, we're actually talking about digital businesses. And we, we, we discuss a lot that in Brazil, and what are the references, and what does it mean to have a digital business? And the idea is, a digital business is something that wins, serves, and retains customers by continuously creating and exploiting digital assets to simultaneously deliver new sources of customer value and increase their operational agility. This is the definition we got from Forrester. I think it was pretty neat. It really brings out the, the value perspective and also how the company can bring more agility in their operations. So I think this was very nice. But the, the thing with Lean, we are always driven by value and our purpose is to deliver value. So we need to have a clear purpose and many times when we're talking about digital transformations, companies uh, get in love with the technology and what technology can do. And we start discussing, again, what is the value for our clients, okay? So just to remember, in Lean, purpose must always be associated with the creation of value from the customer's perspective. And the question is always that, what problem are we trying to solve? So that is a question we continuously need to do to really be sure we understand what is value for our customer. Once we understand and we start discussing about the deployment, the thing about value and we start fixing things and solving problems, who needs to do this? Everyone. So Richard pointed out about the Kaizen, the idea, everyone every day. It's not to be an event, okay? It's not to be a, just a moment. That is why I always question about the event perspective. Kaizen, the idea of getting things better and solving pro problems for our clients, this must be every day, continuously. So every day solving problems connected to customer needs. And then we come back to the technology uh, perspective or risk because Sometimes it's not just about if it's possible, okay? So I pointed out here that it's not enough to be possible. When we talk about technology, and this is something I really love about technology, 
it's really hard to say what is possible, what is not. And again, when you talk about some banks, I'm not going to say any specific banks, but normally you have a lot of money, and actually what is not possible if you have money, if you have technology, if you have time and money, everything is possible. And then you find things like this. I don't know if you've seen this. This is the smallest escalator in the world, okay? So this is built, it's true, it's real, okay? So it's a fact. Here you have the smallest escalator in the world. And it's in Japan, it's excellent. We talk about lean and that's in Japan. But the thing is, you, you, when we look at something like that, you imagine somebody describing, specifying, and okay, so can you build it? Yes, I can, do you have the money? Sure, here it is. Let's build it. There you have it, it's delivered. But what value does that really bring to the client? And, and I really like this picture because you have the escalator, but you still have to go some stairs. So the question when we talk about lean, and many times when I'm, I'm helping companies during their transformation, it's not what technology can do. But again, it's what about the problem we need to solve and what are the needs? I'm sure can, the technology can do it, and we will find a way. But the thing is, what is the problem? And what are the real needs? Is it necessary for the client? Okay. This is in Kawasaki. It's in Guinness Book of Records, if you don't believe. You can go there. But again, why am I saying about the escalator? Let's talk about big numbers. This is what's happening. I go to a lot of uh, Hoshin activities, strategic deployments. People are talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. It's not cheap. It's a lot of effort. And again, it appears there as a number one objective for the year. Have artificial intelligence. It doesn't say why. It doesn't say what problem it has to solve. But everybody wants to be the CIO that brought artificial intelligence to the company. I'm the guy. I put it in. It's here. We have artificial intelligence. And again, when you go there and try to talk to that artificial intelligence to really solve a client's problem, what does it do? What does it really happen? What, did, did, what changed for the client? Okay, so this is something very hard. Again, it's not about what technology can, it can do, but should it do? Is it that problem that we need to solve now, today? Okay. So I bring back some of the concepts. Maybe some of you already have experimented. If you haven't read the book, again, a recommendation, the Lean uh, Startup book from Eric Ries. It's, it brings out some nice perspectives, and one of the things it points out, it's about the short learning cycles, okay? So we talk about bringing things with a shorter perspective, not uh, creating a lot of backlog, not prior prioritizing a lot of backlogs. But why, do, why are we speaking about two weeks, four weeks? We're trying to make short experiments to create learnings. Okay, so when we talk about learning, and this is very nice, we are, we are taking a cycle to prove first a value hypothesis. Okay, it's a value hypothesis. What does that mean is we are not sure, we, we think this may solve. But one thing is interesting about a hypothesis and when you're doing experiments, you may be wrong. And when you're wrong, that is a great moment. That is the moment you're really going to learn. Because if you do a hypothesis and you simply confirm what you already knew, you actually didn't learn so much. But when you have a hypothesis, you put it on test, it doesn't work, you really need to have a deeper understanding. You will create the learning. Okay? So in the book, it brings the, the idea, the concept, it talks about you have to be prepared to pivot, to change. 
based on the learning, based on the scientific experiment. Once you prove value, and what does that mean? Does it solve a customer's problem? So value means there's a customer for that. That's important for somebody. You're solving somebody's problem. Only after that, we talk about the growth hypothesis. Okay? This is in the book, but many times people go over it and don't really understand what this means. First, you have to prove value. Do you really understand what is the problem? And then you think about how you can grow the hypothesis. And how can you create this bigger, faster, cheaper, okay, more optimized? And again, when you look at it, let me go back just a little, a lot of this, the artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, a lot of this really helps out in the growth. But you still haven't proved if, if it's value. In the beginning, if you're doing a short experiment, you don't need a big artificial intelligence going around. Maybe you could do it with a few people, do a short experiment. Minimum viable product to test it out. Test your hypotheses, okay? Always look for a simpler way, a cheaper way to do it. And only after that, we really go after the growth hypotheses. The thing is, many times we are here at the value hypothesis, it doesn't confirm, but we already put so much money and there are so many promises on this. We simply cannot stop. People continue, do the growth, and they prepare a lot of indicators. And I really enjoyed it when Mahi presented the, the watermelon. The number of times we have the watermelon indicators, because simply we cannot say it failed. It's not accepted. A lot of money was put in that. And technology is already being questioned. IT is being questioned. So again, we're talking about the, the ability to really show what's happening. And Lean is always about showing problems and solving problems. Okay? So at this moment, when we say about experiments, you have to be prepared for this. Okay? Even though you presented something fantastic, your client, okay, this is nice. I'm going my way. No, but you're not using the system how it should be used. You're not using the application as I pre presented to you. But again, that's the real customer. That's the real client trying to solve his problems. And it's simply shorter, it's easier. He will try to do it this way. But it wasn't how we imagined. But again, what are we trying to do? Who are we trying to serve? These are the real clients. We need to learn with them, and we need to be prepared to learn with them. Okay? So then we get to something that is very important in Lean. Let me have a look at the time. Okay. Lean thinkers already have embedded the idea we need to learn. But many times when we talk about with people uh, in the businesses, that are still not involved with Lean, there's a question about, but we already have a very nice design. People should follow it. We have an excellent solution. And I really enjoyed this uh, T-shirt from Yuri Levine. I don't know if everybody uses this application. At least in Sao Paulo, we love it, the Waze. Okay? So Yuri was one of the founders of Waze. And, and he during a long period, he would go around always with this t-shirt. It's not about the solution. It's about the problem. We really need to understand the problem. Okay? So you, Im you imagine somebody that really built something incredible, like Waze, and saying, look at the problem. Because it's very easy to try simply to defend that I have the best solution. I, I made Waze. I made Waze. I have the best solution. If you start looking at that, you will stop looking at what really matters to the clients, solving their problems. And this ability to continuously getting our products and our services better every day, that's very important. Again, it's not about a, an event. It's not about just a moment. But continuously creating the evolution of everything we are connecting to our clients. Okay. 
Just for you guys to understand the traffic problems we have in Brazil, the great Sao Paulo area, we have around 20 million people and around 8 million cars just in the main city of Sao Paulo area. Okay, we have the biggest bus fleet in the world, so it's a chaos. And something very interesting, because of all this chaos, it's an ex excellent ground for experiments. So you can imagine Uber, DD, and the other uh, application companies, they really fight for ground in Sao Paulo, because it's simply the biggest market and the biggest place to do any experiments. Okay, so it's, it's very, very interesting, and they use Waze as part of their way of doing. Again, maybe we wouldn't have Uber working so well in Sao Paulo if we didn't have Waze. I don't know. But again, it's, it's getting problems solved every day. I have to bring back my lean side, so let's do a deep dive in concepts. I believe most of you have heard about Gemba. Okay? This is a normal terminology we use a lot. We say it's about the real place where things happen, where problems happen, where value is created. Okay, so if I need to learn something, I should go to the real place. But when I started discussing about lean, and when you really try to understand a problem, and I've done this with a few of my senseis, I was discussing last time with Art, Art Smiley, and he said it's not just about the gamba. When you really need to understand, and this try, uh, really helped me, and I'm trying to help you guys, when we're trying to understand the problem, you need to understand the eight Gs. And I said, oh gosh, what is this? And there you have it. So I present to you the eight Gs. So it's not just about gamba. Let's try this. Gemba, Genju, Genchi, Genbutsu, Genjitsu, Genji, Genpo, Genin. And what you really have when you look at the ideogram, if you look at the first column here, it's always the same. The first ideogram is always real. What is real? When you're trying to understand the problem, you need to understand the real thing, the real deal, the real condition, real position, real thing, real fact, real moment, real method, real cause. That is what we're trying to understand. Lean is always about what is happening. It's not just what I think is happening. And this is very important. When we talk about services, technology, a lot of things are not tangible. When people start thinking what they think, what we have to bring out is what is really happening. So having the information and really understanding, going there to the Gemba, but not just go to the place, but capture the real happening of everything. And that will really help you to change, to change for something better, something good, Kaizen. It's for Kaizen to really happen, okay? I don't know how many here have read the book uh, Lean Solutions. And this is very interesting because this book is from 2005. Okay, so in this book, James Womack and Daniel Jones, they started discussing not only the production value stream, but they started discussing the consumer perspective of a value stream. So the, the consumer and the company connecting. And that happens a lot where? In services. And that is critical. And something that they started pointing out is during a value stream, when you start talking about the customer, you're talking about the customer journey. So that is interesting. In 2005, they already were talking about the customer journey during the value stream and what is happening to the customer at each activity, at each process. And again, it's a customer perspective. It's their understanding what's going on and how they feel and what they are passing through. And when we look at Lean after all these years and how much we've have, we have evolved, for example, in, where is Oriol? Oriol is there. A lot of work has been done, for example, in services in healthcare. And healthcare is all about the patient. He's the main customer, he's the client, he's passing through all this. And, and that's interesting because time for a patient is different 
in his perspective, if you're getting to a hospital sick or you're just at the end of the process waiting to pay the bill, it's totally different. Half an hour wait before being, uh, receiving any medication is totally different from after having a medication. So really understanding, and again, the real deal, what is happening to the customer at each moment, and trying to bring this out and saying what is value from his perspective really helps out, okay? But one thing, when we start talking about the customer journey and the value streams, what, what's been going on in the companies, at least in Brazil, I don't know exactly how many others, people started bringing in the idea of, okay, so I understand we have to get things better. I'm gonna build a lab, labor a laboratory to do things just here, not the whole business, just a small lab. The problem with the, the concept, I don't know if you've seen the series Under the Dome, but there you go, the TV series. The thing with the lab, it doesn't look at the whole journey. It's not end-to-end. -end. It's just a moment in the client's life. Sometimes people are getting the application a little better. Ah, oh, okay, so I can put my, my data here and do something on the web. Perfect. But it doesn't solve the client's problem. It's only part of the story. It's part of his journey. But that moment, we have indicators. We're showing it's much better. And then we start showing a lot of indicators, showing a lot of small, incremental, but not connected. Things are being better, okay? But again, the client's perspective is his journey, and it's end to end. So this may work, and again, I'm not gonna say it's useless, you can do it, but you have to understand that this is just a transition and it should be short. Doing a lab, doing small experiments, it may be interesting to see if we are doing something right. But to really impact the client, you have to look at the end to end. Okay? You have to do the full journey and that means breaking a lot of barriers. So using the under the dome, enclosure may work for a small experiment to prove some kind of value. But again, it's not from the client's perspective most of the times. When we're talking about the journey end to end, we really need to see the whole. We need to understand the value stream until it gets to the client, from the, from the need until it gets to the client. The thing with this, normally the big wastes are exactly between the silos. We've learned a lot about this in the past, with lean happening all over, manufacturing services, but when we look at technology, again, technology is just part of the story. Cesar was pointing that out in his presentation. Many times, developing is just 30% of the value stream. And, this, and the thing, when we talk about the, 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 the customer, we're talking about the 100%, that's what he's feeling. So if, if we get asked ah, something that was 30% and get it half the time, okay, so we dropped something that was, I don't know, two months to one month, but we are still there with the clients from six months, he still has to be with us five months. It doesn't change. His feeling is it didn't change, okay? But we are commemorating, we have parties, and we say, look, we are much better. But the, the life of the client is still the whole journey, okay? So what do we really want? We want to get these processes shorter. We need to break the silos. We need to create the multidisciplinary teams connected, looking at the client's journey, okay? We can, and now, when we start understanding this, I don't have any problems bringing up Internet of Things, Big data, analytics, smart factory, industry 4.0, they're all there to help. They're just ways of achieving this. They're not the final answer. They are just a, a way and a possible way, and that's interesting when we talk about countermeasures, they are a possible countermeasure to fix a problem in the client's perspective. So what we want, we want to have a continuous flow 
of value generation using technology as a means to achieve a lower lead time and improve the customer experience. That is what we want and that is what we really need when we talk about technology. So, looking at this in a matrix uh, perspective, when we want to have a lean digital transformation in the whole organization, and this is what we're talking about now, we still have all the departments. We have marketing, we have development production, we have technology, we have all the supplier, uh, the purchasing area, we have sales. But the client doesn't see a de department. The client doesn't receive value from a department. The client receives value from the value streams. The value streams deliver value. And the value streams, actually, they are a mix of departments. People from all these disciplinary uh, areas that understand and need to work together to deliver value for the customer. So we've just seen a, uh, two presentations ago, the idea of the business moment. That's right, yeah, business moment. So the business moment is a moment where you're getting all the areas together to fix a problem in the client's perspective. And this is a way to really start delivering value perceived by our customer through value stream A, B, C, and everything that delivers value for the customer. All the rest is just a way and a means to help deliver the value. They are here to, to help somebody deliver the value, okay? And this matrix uh, perspective is important when we're defining indicators, because all the indicators for the areas or departments, the silos, should be how well they are serving the value streams. Because there's nothing more important than to serve the value streams that deliver actually value for a client that is paying for everything. So we need to define leaders for these value streams. When we look uh, at the references, when we look back at Toyota, we see the chief, energy, sorry, the chief engineering, the SHUSAs, that really work that out in a product perspective and everybody serving and helping the SHUSA to deliver value to the client. What we're talking about here in, in services, in the technology, many times we're talking about the journeys. It's not just the product, it's the journey. Because many times the journey, the client needs to solve a problem, he has to go through a lot of different applications and products internally. But again, that's our problem, our internal problem. It's not the client's problem. We need to fix that. We need to really create a good user experience, okay? So, to really achieve the whole organization in a new way of delivering and having a full digital transformation, we are gonna do this and we'll achieve this through the digital transformation of the value streams. Okay, so that is the way of start doing. Start looking at the journey. Start looking at what's important for your clients. When you fulfill this, you will have fulfilled the whole organization. Because again, if an, a department is not helping this, why does it exist? So if you've done all the value streams that deliver something to the client, and all the internal departments are not connected to this, should they really be here? Are they really important for the, the business? That's a great test for any area you have inside the organization. And just to have a closure on this, when we look at the transformation in, our, in the Lean Global Network as a perspective, we have the Lean Transformation Framework, okay? So it's the way of understanding and putting all this a little more visual. So we understand that we need to start from a value-driven purpose. It's the roof of our house. Once we understand what's the value-driven, we start discussing what are the processes that need to change to better deliver the value. Once we talk about the process, then we start talking about what capabilities we need to develop. We're talking about people, 
things are changing. People need to be developed and they need to be prepared to improve the process and to continuously evolve this, this process. And the evolution of this process is key. Again, it's not just a moment. It should be every day, everyone getting this process a little better. Our management system needs to help this. And, and we need to prepare the leaders. We were discussing this before. Cesar Gon was giving his personal uh, examples in the morning because the leadership needs to change. They need to change their behaviors because they were designed and they grew in their traditional way. And they are leaders now because they have a good expertise of, of, what, of how we used to do things in the past. But we are changing the processes. We need a new way of doing the management system. We need for the leadership to be prepared for this change. And the great thing about this, we are talking about the culture, the way of thinking, and how we visualize what is a problem. And really, uh, lean, it's, it's hard, it's a big challenge when we talk about exposing problems. This is possibly, when we talk about technology and services, one of the big issues. Really exposing and, and really being happy about the problem. So, again, I really enjoy the, 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 the T-shirt from Yuri, uh, from the founder of Waze because you really have to be passionate about problems. That is the way of bringing out things, discussing with the group. It's not about people having problems, but it's about the process having problems and how we're going to get this better every time. Okay? So what we are discussing here when we bring lean and digital together, lean has a lot to gain also from a digital and technology, it can help. It's like I said, technology is there. We can use it to help. It can empower Lean. It can get Lean easier for companies to uh, apply, to experiment. But the same way, when we talk, talk about digital, it's not just having technology, but bringing uh, Lean also during this transformation and guaranteeing that we are empowering digital with Lean, without waste looking at what is important for the client. And this balance is fundamental during this lean digital transformation. Okay, thank you.